Hello and welcome back and we want to continue our look at the TerraMaster NAS user interface otherwise known as TOS 3.1 TerraMaster operating system. Now first things first we already covered how to set up the NAS for the first time and we looked at all the individual default settings and apps when we first set up the device the file manager the control panel backing up and more but right now what I want to talk about are all of the extra applications available via that application center. So if we go into that, like all NASs, TOS arrives with an app center, an app store, which has loads of free apps available straight away from the off. Now, first things first, yes, the likes of Synology and QNAP do have a lot more apps available by default from the off. However, whereas they arrive with 100 to 150 apps respectively in their app centers, uh, TOS 3.1 from TerraMaster arrives with around 30 to 35 apps. So before you start thinking, wait, that's not fair, that's not a lot of apps, I would, I've would i got to give a little bit of credit to the guys at TerraMaster for this because although they've only got 30 to 35 apps, almost all of them are either essential or are going to be used. QNAP and Synology might have loads and loads of apps, and I'm still a huge fan of Synology and QNAP. All of the R&D and their brands are still tip top to me, but there's still no denying that of the 100 to 150 apps that you get from Synology and QNAP, most users barely use 10 to 15% of them. People will use the same few apps with a lot of them. If you Even if you go to Synology and QNAP's own user interface and you look at how many times those apps have been downloaded, some of them have barely broke a thousand downloads. And when you are talking about a brand that sells tens of thousands of NAS a year, you can see that some of those apps are just chaff. Now, in the TOS platform, all the apps that are here that we looked at briefly in the other video, I can see myself using at least 60 to 70 percent of these apps there's not a lot of outsider kind of bespoke custom apps once again it's up to you if you think that's a good thing or a bad thing i'm not sure but for example virtual machine managers i can definitely see a use for that i can see all kinds of apps here that people are going to use there you go i just installed one it really is that straightforward let's install another one just to show how quick and easy that is well, it's installing. The blue bar here in the background is going to start filling up, and that will show that this app is being installed. Now, while it does that in the background, what I want this video to be about is a closer look at all of the individual apps. I'll try and give them all a good 15 seconds to a whole minute each, and we'll focus on each of them. First and foremost, DLNA Media Server. If you're using a NAS for streaming your pictures, your music, your video, to your smart TV, your iPod, your Bose sound system, um, or to your home console, your PS4, or Xbox One, you are going to need this app. Just because then it enables DLNA and DLNA media server. And you select individual uh, directories, and of these directories, these are the ones where that content will be streamed. So think about that. You, what that means from that point is, instead of the entire NAS being searchable on your local network via DLNA, you can hand-pick individual folders that can be searched, which is very useful indeed. Again, we haven't created many folders in this from our other video, but it's still worth highlighting that that's quite a neat little setup there. Next, Dropbox Sync and Elephant Drive. Let's open both of these together because I do think it's worth talking about them both at the same time. Now, as mentioned in my other video, it is worth remembering that a NAS, in the way that most people use them these days, is not a backup. If you back up, if you consider backing up data from your iPhone, your Android phone, your laptop, your Mac via Apple Time Machine and more, if you back up all of that data onto the NAS, and then delete the data from your smartphone, your laptop, your whatever, to make space, the NAS is no longer a backup. It now has the only copy of the file that you sent to it. So if that NAS dies, the hardware failure, the drive dies, anything like that, you have lost that file. Therefore, the NAS is no longer a backup, is it? Now, one of the ways in which people back up their NAS off-site is with third-party cloud backups such as these. You can synchronize and enable um, individual directories and um, individual folders to be backed up so if you select one and synchronize and back up your third party cloud to the NAS which can work both ways so third party migration and data backup to third party clouds 
from the NAS is incredibly useful to back up your data off-site. Now, if you've got an Elephant Drive login, you can click there, click Enter Elephant Drive, and then synchronize that Elephant Drive with your TerraMaster NAS. So all of that storage, and you can already set up a terabyte of data for free for the first 30 days, or there's lots of free packages with 50 gig and more. You can have that as your third-party cloud that has off-site data. So again, lovely little feature, and at this price level, a nice feature indeed for this TerraMaster NAS. Now, next, a mail server. Now, a mail server is for those that want to host an email server, an existing email server, or a brand new one on their uh, NAS. This means there will be exchanges of data if you've got attachments or other more secure or large files that you want to email back and forth. An email server is on your NAS is very advantageous for both business and the home. And it's a nice feature, once again, that they've included in this. I'm not going to say it's particularly up to date. It utilizes a kernel software that already exists elsewhere. And it is pretty basic, the mail server, it has to be said. But when it comes down to it, it's only working as a mail server. This isn't the front end. You're going to be using Outlook and other uh, MailChimp and other mail handling software um, that, back, that have their own back end that will connect to this NAS. Um, some of the other apps that we installed earlier have popped up here in the background. We've got Clam Antivirus. I've never looked at this one. And this is an antivirus software for your NAS that will scan all the files and folders on your NAS for problems. So if you've backed up files from your NAS, uh, from your PC or whatever onto this device and you're worried about viruses that are Linux or Windows based, this will let you run a full scan on your NAS for antivirus. Again, not a lot of NAS brands arrive with this by default. You can forget the likes of D-Link and those other budget ones, Zixel and more. This does that job beautifully. Now, Moving forward, Plex Media Server. Let's face it, a lot of you, this is probably the most important app you're going to install for a number of you. Now, the Plex Media Server application comes in two parts. First and foremost, you have to enable the Plex Media Server. So once again, you've installed this app, it's the latest version, you click Enter Plex, and this will open a new tab on your browser. And what you do here is, I've already done this in advance before the video, is this gives you the ability to Add your Plex account and setting up a Plex account is completely free. Uh, you can set up a free one or you can go for a premium one that has lots of apps and add-ons. That's called uh, Plex Pass. And from there, you can select different directories on your NAS. So if we add a directory here, we'll make this a directory for photos. You then select the folder that you want to browse. In my case, it was um, in the home, I believe. My, uh, where is it? Home. And I created different... Uh, folders for all of our data earlier on and what this will do is this will search those folders and directories for images in my case and it will find those and right now it's scanning it in the background so if I was searching for music I'd create a music directory and bung a load of music in it and the same thing goes for videos for those that aren't aware Plex is a bloody great application there you go I selected the wrong bloody directory um, but nevertheless it is great to know that um, the Plex Media Server application and all of those individual Plex apps that let you add things like um, a Kodi add-on and more are available. And again, the, because this is uh, this particular NAS is an Intel-based CPU dual core, it means that you can enable uh, Plex Media Server application and transcoding straight away off the bat. And again, at this price level, that is a huge bonus in terms of storage and internal hardware for your Plex Media Server that can be picked up from by your mobile phones, your smart TV, anywhere in the world. Very easy setup there, everyone. Next, probably more for business, is the Sugar CRM platform. Now, Sugar is a customer management system. If you're in a sales force, if you deal with um, multiple customers, or you've got lots and lots of clients that you want to upload from a CSV, this is definitely the app you're going to want to use. And again, Sugar is completely free. And the installation takes place on another tab. That's why it's not doing it now, unfortunately. Um, but Sugar CRM is very straightforward and is definitely for those of you out there that want to set up and install a customer record system for your business or more on the NAS. So again, very straightforward. And if you've already got it, um, uh, a CSV that you've downloaded from Microsoft Access or even from Google, you can download lots of customer records from there onto this NAS. Um, it will create those databases based on 
what you download. And again, I haven't got one to hand, so unfortunately I can't create it from here. But this is where you will have customer phone numbers, point of contact. And if you're running a business around the NAS and you want something where all of your sales staff can see all of their orders in the past, can see who's spoken to them and there's notes and more, Sugar CRM is a lovely start and is included completely free with this NAS. Next, iTunes server. Now, if you are someone that uses a Mac-based system or a device that is primarily geared towards picking up iTunes and your iTunes library and therefore playing the music you've purchased on iTunes, setting up an iTunes server on your NAS is incredibly useful. It means it will make all of your media files um, be visible as an iTunes server and therefore you can add it as a source um, on iTunes from any one number of your um, iTunes compatible devices. Again, your both your Play Sound systems uh, and more, your Sonos Sound systems. So it's definitely something. And once again, you can individually select different directories to get the job done. And those are really kind of the core apps for me um, on this device. Again, we are installing more stuff about virtual machines. We can send that to the desktop there. If we want to set up a virtual machine at one point, that will be quite fun to do that. But that is a whole video in itself, setting up virtual machines um, on a NAS. But again, look at these apps here. If there's anything that stands out more for you, we didn't look at the, uh, the download tool, actually. Having that as a download utility, so you, all of your NZB, your BT, all basically your downloads, that you want to set up a download server onto the NAS, that is one for you. Now, maybe I'm missing something, but I haven't seen a surveillance app yet. And that's the one thing missing from this. If I had to critique this device, and of course I will because I'm trying to be as balanced as possible, there isn't a surveillance app and a number of you out there will find that disappointing because that is something that Synology and QNAP have got sewn up pretty well. And again, there's another means there with backing up to a third party cloud and that includes Google Drive and Amazon S3, uh, the content of your names. But nevertheless, this has been the application overview for TerraMaster TOS 3.1. I will be doing a couple more videos on this, hopefully a Plex Media Server NAS video, as well as comparing it with a couple of NASes here I've got ready and waiting in the background, namely a DS116. We'll have a look at this here, just to give you a little taster of what we're going to be seeing, as well as a QNAP here that we're waiting to make a comparison on these devices. I'm looking forward to seeing how all of these operating systems compare. There's our Synology operating system, and there's our QNAP operating system loading now. Again, do check out my videos of the software overview of both of these platforms. Um, and again, as you might see, the QNAP one is a great deal more, a great deal more analytical than the Synology one. The Synology one, a lot more chewable, user friendly. So again, I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.